Well, you know, I, I want to say I, I certainly I loved what I heard from Vice President Harris uh, over the weekend, uh, really putting her in line with the bipartisan majority in the U.S. House of Representatives. That's you know Democrats and Republicans embracing digital innovation. The the, the messaging that she she put out was what we were encouraging her to, to embrace. And and what I what it shows is a real reset on this issue and a shift from the current approach of regulation by enforcement with the SEC. You know, we we know I know. From my conversations with with Vice President Harris and her team, that we're going to have a forward-looking president uh, who's going to embrace digital innovation and wants to keep those jobs here. She understands why it's important for the U.S. to be a leader in this space. So, you know, this is this was uh, a very welcome policy, you know, update from her and and policy proposal. But but the the language she's using is, is very specific and and very important in terms of the the work we're doing here in the House of Representatives. Uh, and and then on you know with when we get through the Senate to get this bill done um, in this Congress. So uh, you know I think it, I think for for folks watching you know this space uh, it was it was a big deal what she said. Well, if we could put a finer point on it, Congressman, you sent a tweet over the weekend that got our attention, writing this new policy position puts her in line with Fit Twenty One House and Senate Democrats working to protect consumers and keep digital innovation in the United States. Do we know that, in fact, that the contents of Fit 21 are endorsed by Kamala Harris? You know, what, what we do know is that, that she's staking out a position that, that you know, signals a shift from, from the current Biden administration. That's just natural with, with a, a, a new candidate, you know, running in her own right. Uh, so, you know, I think that's, that's important to mm -hmm. point out here. And, um, you know, we're, we're gonna, she's going to continue to make policy proposals and, and elaborate on her issues. But, but I, think, I think if you're just talking specifically about Fit 21, uh, you know, what we're going to see is what Senator Schumer has, has pledged to get this bill on the floor of the Senate for a vote and back to the House this year. And yeah. um, when, it, when, when he does that, it's going to be, you know, Democratic votes that push this issue. And, um, you know, we're going to see an improved product that I think is definitely going to be the kind of thing that can get support from, from uh, you know, from a Vice President Harris and, and from others. Well, and what if that becomes uh, reality will be the result of that is different delineation between the authorities of the CFTC and SEC when it comes to regulating digital assets. But Congressman, I am curious in your conversations with the vice president and her team around crypto, are they suggesting to you that we will see different uh, heads of those regulatory bodies? Who would you recommend if they decide not to keep uh, the current current occupants like Gary Gensler in those seats? Well, I, I don't want to talk about what they've said, but I can talk about what I've said. And I've said that, that Gary Gensler has been a disaster for this administration and his approach on digital assets has, has taken our country in the wrong direction in a very, very significant way. Uh, I, I don't think there's anyone in the U.S. Congress who thinks that Gary Gensler could ever survive a Senate confirmation for any position in the administration. So I, I think if anybody hmm. you know, is trying to talk about hmm. Gary Gensler continuing on beyond his term, uh, they're just trying to make cheap political points. Uh, I, I think How his, you know, there's, there, I think there's zero chance that that he ever gets confirmed for anything else, and I, I've said that a whole bunch. So I think, you know, I think the, the his approach is gonna is gonna end when his term ends, and you know, all I can do is just focus on making sure that that uh, you know, if and when we get Vice President Harris as our our, our next president, that uh, you know she has a balanced approach on this issue, and that was the signal that we got. From, from her own mouth, uh, you know, on these issues over the weekend. As we spend time with Congressman Wiley Nickel of North Carolina, I understand you could be voting as soon as Wednesday, Congressman, on a stopgap funding bill. It's on to Plan B, this one described by Speaker Johnson as clean. It's a three-month stopgap, and he will need Democrats to pass it. Are you on board? Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. And, and, and for folks watching... Uh, it's going to be House Democrats who are putting people over politics and putting this issue over the top. Uh, Republicans continue to be at war with each other. The chaos and confusion I see across the aisle uh, continues on. We're, we're on track to be the least productive Congress in our nation's history. But uh, this week, we are going to get a vote on a clean CR to keep the lights on. And it's going to be the majority of votes coming from House Democrats to put this issue over the top in the House and I believe in the Senate as well. Uh, so. You know, I think that's that's something for folks to to, to keep an eye on. You know, we're, we're here to govern. We're here to be responsible. My Republican colleagues just want to blow things up 
and Mike Johnson, I don't know if he's even going to get a, get a majority of, of Republicans uh, to support this, but but House Democrats will be there, and uh, because you know we, we can't we can't roll back the the progress we're making with the economy by by a, a huge unforced error of shutting down the federal government. So I, I'm very well. So if the can well, and and if your optimism uh, proves correct that this will uh, ultimately get passed, kick the can down the road to December 20th when it will be the lame duck session, assuming we'll know the outcome uh, of the election. Congressman, how messy could this get at the end of the year? Are you concerned when Mike Johnson hasn't been able to keep uh, his party in line to get things across currently that that may actually uh, create quite a, quite a messy situation come the end of the year and the end of this Congress? I, I think reasonable minds are going to prevail, especially after the election. So much of what happens in Congress right now is driven by politics with the presidential election. Uh, the best time for, for bipartisan governance is for those two months right after an election. It's the furthest away we're going to be from the next election, which is the midterm, two years away. So I, I'm really working hard on a ton of issues to, to push them across the finish line. Uh, things you know like Fit 21 for, for digital assets and, and certainly getting a good, um, a, you know, a good continuing resolution you know, or budget, which which we actually should have passed months ago. So uh, I think in this case, we're we're in. Um, I'm I'm very optimistic that uh, we're we're going to start working on this this next CR or you know, the budget, uh, and and uh, you know have a ton of options that we can get moving in a bipartisan way right after the election. Well, Congressman Nickel, there's a lot of talk about your home state of North Carolina after what happened with the lieutenant governor, a Republican running for the big job. He's uh, the nominee for governor. Mark Robinson stopped a lot of people in their tracks last week with this story on CNN about his trolling on this porn site and some of the outrageous things uh, that he is said to have posted. He still says none of it's true, but... Uh, most of his entire senior staff has now quit. He was left last evening with just three campaign staffers, one of whom is his bodyguard. What do you know about this, Congressman? Had you heard any stories like these? And how does this end for Mark Robinson? Well, I, I, I think it's going to end very well for the, the American people and the, the people of North Carolina because we're going to have a great governor with Josh Stein. Uh, we've known this mm -hmm. about... Uh, We've known Mark Robinson's character for quite a long time. He's totally unfit to be our, our next governor. I served in the state Senate when he was, you know, the, the president of the Senate as our lieutenant governor. Uh, and and his, his positions are far out of, you know, the, the mainstream for North Carolina. But we now know uh, really even more about who he is. The, the, the comments he's made are horrific, disgusting, and totally disqualifying. And, um, you know, the, the fact that his entire campaign staff quit, you know, as a group tells you that they know that it's, it's true as well. So um, I think, uh, you know, my focus is just communicating with, with folks in North Carolina about the good choice they have w for Josh Stein and um, mm -hmm. making it clear that if you, don't, if you don't condemn Mark Robinson, you stand with him and you stand with his, his Nazi positions, his pro-slavery positions, and so many others that are just absolutely disqualifying. Uh, I wish I wish uh, we were in the news for better things in North Carolina, but uh, um, mm. unfortunately, this uh, this sad story is uh, is is getting out there. Um, you know, but but for me, North Carolina is yeah. a, is a, an amazing place where y'all means all, and I think that's the message I want for folks to, <laughs> to have as they think about the great state of North Carolina. Well, and of course, it is a state that could ultimately decide the outcome of the presidential election as well. There's been some conversation since these allegations around Mark Robinson came to light about the, the downward drag he could create for Donald Trump. And yet the new New York Times Siena poll that was conducted in North Carolina from September 17th to 21st, so at least in part after these allegations came to light, still shows Donald Trump up two points on Harris, 49 to 47. Yes, within the margin of error. But would you expect these Robinson allegations to move that needle more materially for Harris? I, I do because um, Donald Trump endorsed Mark Robinson. He's, he's, he's still standing with him right now. And uh, I think that's something that is, is important for the voters. And we're going to continue to, to make the case that, that uh, by refusing to condemn this absolutely abhorrent uh, behavior, these posts, the, the things that he said, uh, it, it shows that you're with him. 